Good morning, Home Delivery World. My name is Andrew Travis, and I'm the VP of Sales and Customer Success at OnFleet, the most advanced last mile delivery platform for retailers in the world. I'm here to talk to you about where, because where a delivery will or did take place should inform every aspect of your last mile delivery program. Where can provide you with the information you need to understand your customer better and optimize delivery to that customer. But how can we understand more about the where? The answer is geospatial analysis. Now, many of you have either performed geospatial analysis or seen the results of an analysis, but unfortunately, very few organizations today are using it to design, build, and iterate on a delivery program. Let's look at some examples. You can use a drive time analysis to determine the most optimal servicing area around a store or fulfillment center. Now this is much more than a postcode map or some fixed radius around a single point. This is an evaluation of your ability to service a particular customer in a given amount of driving time. Or a demographic analysis. So you can focus marketing efforts or service coverage to groups that have the highest propensity to use them. You can schedule rollout or scale up plans based on ideal customer profiles. You can use a demand point analysis to determine the best location for a new micro fulfillment center or how best to split demand between multiple stores or fulfillment centers. My presentation today will focus on the creation of route zones or territories using demand point analysis, a little utilized approach that when used properly can dramatically improve your organization's delivery efficiency and your customer experience. This can all be performed using off the shelf GIS tools like Esri's ArcGIS. Now, before we get into the method, let's start with a little background on zones. A route zone or territory is an area of operation where one or more routes can be created. At a minimum, this is just a named geographic area. And historically, this is defined by a group of route engineers sitting around a map and drawing out based on collected local knowledge and experience. Today, route engineers use tools that cluster addresses together and delineate the zones using land features, highways, or neighborhood barriers. Once created, these do allow for stops to be grouped and ordered by a human or an algorithmic routing optimization engine. Over a long enough period of time, zones are tweaked as feedback from drivers and route performance is considered. And eventually these do settle into reasonably efficient states. This is how many scheduled delivery organizations have operated for years. And zones provide many reporting benefits too. Route metrics like stops per on road hour, which we want to maximize, stops per on zone hour, also maximize. Stops per route, of course, we want to maximize. The stem out time, which we'd like to minimize. This is the time from the fulfillment center or the depot out to the zone and the stem in time, the time from the zone back to the depot, which we want to minimize. Now, a zone also provides the efficiency and delight of human repetition. Neighborhood knowledge like parking tips and tricks, lane preferences, the development of customer relationships over time. We all know our postman. And the ease of executing preferences like put the package under the back porch. But zones also have their challenges. As I indicated earlier, and in many cases, zone creation is driven by estimation. And if a routing engine is used over that zone, we create artificial constraints that dramatically impact the ability of the routing engine to achieve consistently efficient results. Routes created in these zones can't adapt to changing demand and the fundamental characteristics of a dynamic transportation environment. 
If demand grows in a particular zone or there's a labor shortage, <clears throat> humans need to carve up that zone into smaller pieces temporarily or permanently. And zone creation and adjustment requires continuous feedback from the field. Now, if we look at the alternative, fully dynamic routing, where no zones or territories are used, strictly speaking, we can expect more efficient routes. Every day, all the latest inputs can be considered, the exact number of drivers available, the demand, the traffic, and the engine can create a unique route that is the most efficient for the day, uncompromised by the zone boundaries. However, for those of you who have moved to fully dynamic routing or are trying to move to fully dynamic routing, you already know route metrics aren't nearly as useful when they can't be compared apples to apples with matching historical routes. Your customers may get a different driver each and every day, and you've lost that repetitional efficiency that comes from a driver staying in the same region day in and day out. So how can we reconcile these two concepts without interfering with the benefits of both? How can we take the human knowledge, the customer experience benefits, and the KPIs that we get in zoned routes and the efficiency gains that come from a more dynamic routing approach? I'd like to start with what not to do, which unfortunately is the most common method used today. You can't use your old zones and limit algorithmic routes to within them. As mentioned earlier, this will limit the ability of the routing engine to evaluate the solution and yield inefficient results. Now, a route optimization engine will always create a better result than one that is hand sequenced, but that's a pretty low bar in 2020. Now, if you don't have existing zones, you also can't take a clustered approach. Now I know this is the zone creation method many off the shelf routing engines use, and you can even do this in OnFleet if you really desire. But once again, you're still limiting the routing engine's ability to create the most efficient routes as you've created the zones based on destinations, demand points, proximity to one another. And proximity is a factor that we need to consider, but we must evaluate the demand, the business rules, and the transportation network holistically if we're going to get efficient results. One method I do encourage, although it is somewhat temporary, is to run fully dynamic routing sessions. Again, routing unconstrained by zones, and then draw a zone around it. This is better than the previous two approaches. However, the routing optimization engine is factoring historical, real-time, and predictive traffic data in the creation of these routes. So while we're considering the road network, we're really biasing the zone creation to a specific traffic scenario. To combat this, you may need to regularly stress test these zones against fully dynamic optimizations to ensure that they're still representative of the ground truth. Now, of course, the whole purpose of this conversation is to discuss a method that uses geospatial analysis. So let's circle back to that. In particular, our demand point analysis. So as a reminder, this is the same geospatial service that we would use to pick an optimal location for a new fulfillment center or a distribution hub. However, we're gonna lean on this to create an efficient route zone that stands up to the test of time and allows for flex when needed in the right places. So let's step our way through the process and don't overanalyze the graphics because they're a simplified representation of what we're actually doing here. So to begin with, we need to generate a data set for analysis. So this could be based on historical data or be a prediction of demand based on demographic data. So you don't have to wait so you do deliveries in an area to actually run this analysis. But ultimately, these are demand points, destinations where we're delivering or picking up. We want to work with a fairly large data set. So this means thousands of potential demand points in a service area. Obviously, my image here has quite a few less. 
Then we're going to take a random subset of these demand points, which will become our seed points, or our candidate seed points in this case. So for this example, let's assume we've picked 100 candidate seed points. And this seed point is going to represent a center point where a driver could hypothetically fulfill the demand around it, the deliveries and the pickups. Then we're going to take a larger distinct subset of the same data set, which we will continue to represent our demand distribution. So let's say a thousand demand points. Now, this is where we're going to use our GIS tools. Again, in ArcGIS, this is called a location allocation analysis. Our objective here is to create zones that are balancing two competing constraints, and the location allocation tool will do this for us. The high density of demand has a tendency to shrink the zones down. The road network, where travel impedance is the lowest, you can move the fastest, this will work to expand the size of the zones. So we're going to request the analysis to return a given number of zones. So for example, 10 of the 100 seed points with the objective of minimizing a super linear cost function. The result is an optimal mapping of the demand to a representative center point, which you kind of see in these starbursts on screen here. Now, if I've lost some of you, don't worry. That's the end of the GIS part. For those of you familiar with GIS tools, this will make a little more sense. So the next point, we're going to construct convex hulls around these allocated demand points. This is going to create overlapping zones. We can think of these like big overlapping colored rubber bands around all of our demand. Now is when we need to run route optimization constrained to these zones. So this is no longer fully dynamic optimization. We're going to use the zones we just created and run routes for historical demand. Now, this is not the same data set that we use to create these zones. This is going to be actual days. So pick historical days that are representative of your high volume days and your low volume days. For example, if Friday is typically your highest volume, make sure you create routes for a few of your historical Fridays. If Tuesday is your lowest volume, run routes for a few historical Tuesdays. Make sure in your routing constraints that you're using a soft zoned approach. So in addition to the overlap we see here, these routes will actually flex beyond the boundaries even more. If your route optimization engine does not allow for a soft zoned approach, then it's time to get a new route optimization engine. So we now have taken the demand, the road network impedance, and the business constraints to create feasible routes that meet all of your requirements that are operating loosely within created zones. And we have a few options to solidify the zone boundaries using the created routes, which are layered on top. Now this part is a little bit more art than science, and we can do a number of things here. We can adjust our boundaries to meet other business or geospatial constraints. So a postcode boundary, for instance, now would be the time to add it, although that will dramatically reduce efficiency as we're now cutting across somewhat arbitrarily. We could adjust the boundaries so that there's no overlap at all. So if we want to keep our drivers blocked into their zones completely, no flex at all. This will also reduce efficiency, but not quite as much as adding postcodes, for instance. Or we can adjust the overlap to allow flex in the areas that we desire it, but not in the areas where it's undesirable. So for instance, we can remove flex in commercial areas to ensure that the same driver is always servicing your business customers, while allowing more flex in residential areas where this may be less critical. But this is up to you. Like most things in life, moderation is key. Allowing for some flex between zones lets the routing engine adapt to changing conditions, but keeps drivers generally operating in the same region. And now we're finished. 
route zones that are going to provide predictability to drivers and customers, repetitional efficiency, and take the most advantage of dynamic algorithmic route optimization engines. So I'm going to conclude with some numbers from an actual geospatial analysis and zone creation that OnFleet did with a big three parcel carrier, someone who has been doing deliveries in the market for 75 years and spent a tremendous amount of time and money in route engineering. So we created route zones using demand point analysis, the location and allocation, layered on complex operational constraints, added zip boundaries, factored in union requirements, and yet these still demonstrated pretty impressive results. So let's return to our route metrics to compare them. So here we're comparing zones created without flex against the historical. So that stops for on-road hour, we've increased by 25%. On zone hour, not as big of an impact, but average hours per route has gone down 10%. We're saving dollars every single day. Stem out time, so again, from the depot out to the zone, down 25%, and stem in time, down 81%. So we're always finishing in a much more efficient position to return to the depot. Now let's look at it when we add flex. The results are even better for the number of stops for on-road hour, 50% increase over the historical zones. Stops per on-zone hour up 32%, and average hours per route down 11%, average stem out time down 32, and stem in time down 77%. And if we compare flexible zones versus inflexible zones, we can see, of course, the flex zones are going to provide more benefits. Now, more than ever, every second counts and every customer experience counts. Using geospatial analysis, your organization can maximize delivery efficiency and delight your customers. And that is the power of where. Thank you very much.